A charismatic leader, one who has risen above all others, speaks to the multitudes. They have waited for him. They believe in him. They expect he will heal the world's ills. Some say he is the Messiah, finally returned. But this man is not a savior. He is the king of terror who will usher in the end of everything. For thousands of years, prophets around the world have predicted the end of days. More than one suggests the apocalypse is fast approaching. We call this theoretical convergence between doomsday prophecies and today's events the Nostradamus effect. How will the end begin? The Antichrist, the false messiah, a child of Satan. The word Antichrist first appears in the New Testament. In this ancient text, there is a prophecy that states the Antichrist, the beast, will come to seduce mankind. Instead, believers say he will usher in the end of days, Armageddon. The Antichrist is a man who receives the power of Satan. The Antichrist, of course, represents the devil on earth. He is a false messiah. That's exactly what he is. We will examine the theory that the Antichrist is already among us. Who is the Antichrist? Who predicted his arrival? If prophecies are to be believed, do they connect to more than one warning about such a figure? And are they linked to events in our own time, in a web of convergence? We will neither refute nor endorse these theories, merely present the evidence. The word Antichrist has its origins in religion, combining the Greek anti, instead of or in place of, with Christ or Christos, the anointed. What it refers to is a period in the early church when various groups were starting to split off, each of them understanding Christ's teachings in their own unique way, and each of them denouncing all the others as heretical. So from the point of view of any one of these groups, everybody else was an antichrist. Other religions have their own malevolent figures, but only the religions in the Judaic tradition have an antichrist. The term Antichrist is literally only alluded to really in Islam besides Judaism and Christianity. And they have their imposter messiah. And he will come on the scene in the last days, much like the Antichrist in the Bible will come on the scene in the last days. In Islam, he is called Masih ad-Dajjal, or the imposter. Some biblical interpreters believe that just as Jesus is the Son of God, the Antichrist is considered the Son of Satan. In spirituality, the enemy of Christ himself is the Antichrist. Even as God the Father sent Jesus Christ the Son, theoretically, Satan himself will send this man on the planet to be the enemy of all that is good. One of the earliest of the biblical antichrist prophecies comes from the New Testament in the book of Revelation. It describes the antichrist's arrival in the world. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. How is this ancient prophecy entwined with other, later prophecies about the Antichrist? Prophecies that may be an example of the Nostradamus effect. For some, the key may lie with Nostradamus himself. Nostradamus was a messenger of the divine plan. He would have been interested in the Antichrist because he would want the human race to know what they were facing in the future, specifically toward the end times. 
Nostradamus began publishing all of his prophecies, including his visions of the Antichrist, in the mid-16th century. Nostradamus straddled this really obscure line between magic and science, between heresy and conformity. His prophecies consist of ten books called Centuries, each consisting of four-lined poems called quatrains. It was within these writings that Nostradamus revealed his visions of the Antichrist. Nostradamus categorically believed that his gift of prophecy was a gift from God. It was his responsibility to alert the world to these things. Some suggest that the visions he experienced were horrible and confusing, a mix of unrecognizable technology and staggering violence. Try to imagine what it would be like if you had an ability to open a window to 500 years ahead into the future and you saw fantastic things that went against everything you believed, what would you do with that? He attempted to describe them in his writings. One who the infernal gods of Hannibal will cause to be reborn, terror to all mankind. Nostradamus dedicated a number of quatrains to Antichrist prophecy. Followers of his quatrains confirmed that Nostradamus did not see just one Antichrist. He saw three Antichrists, each appearing in his own time, each worse than the last. Nostradamus is unique in the history of prophecy. All other traditions, East and West, have one Antichrist, but he has three. Experts say Nostradamus wrote of two antichrists that have since come and gone, leaving unparalleled destruction and bloodshed in their wake. Many insist that the final part of this prophecy has yet to come true. They suggest that the third false prophet may be destined to wreak havoc in our own time, and that he may be among us right now. Some believe that the key to unlocking the mystery of the third Antichrist may be found in the identities of the first two, and that clues revealing who they are could be found in Nostradamus's quatrains. An emperor will be born near Italy. He will cost his empire very dearly. In this quatrain, it is suggested that Nostradamus prophesied the first Antichrist, Nostradamus predicts this destructive leader will come from southern Europe to plague his own people. Napoleon was born near Italy. He did bring his empire to ruin. In that quatrain, we have a story of a ruler who brought about disaster. Is Napoleon the leader Nostradamus envisioned? Century 1, quatrain 60 would seem to be a pretty good dead-on prediction as close as Nostradamus comes to an identifiable prophecy which came true in a way that we can recognize. The second Antichrist is even worse. Nostradamus writes that he too is European and possesses unprecedented powers of persuasion. From the very depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. Hitler was famous for his oratory, for leading a nation astray with his oratorical gift. Once again, Nostradamus's prophecy seems to converge with an actual historical figure, one born centuries later, a man who very nearly conquered the world. Many believe that if Nostradamus successfully predicted the appearance of Napoleon and Hitler, his prophecy of the third Antichrist is also likely to come true. Is this exaggerated doctrine or credible evidence? What are the exact links between these three alleged false prophets? A closer examination of Nostradamus's Antichrist quatrains may allow us to reveal the truth. Nearly 500 years ago, history's famed prophet Nostradamus predicted the arrival of three antichrists, each building on the power of the last. Some believe the third and most dangerous antichrist may be among us now. 
things tend to go in threes. In the esoteric world, we call it the law of threes. So the basic idea was that there would be three people that would together, if you looked at the broad range of their history, completely change civilization. Will an investigation of various threads of evidence help us judge the accuracy of the belief that the third Antichrist will appear in our lifetime? Most people already are looking for somebody to lead the world to a global peace, to solve these great crises that we have throughout the world. The Antichrist will be that savior. What clues are embedded in the quatrains of Nostradamus? Hints to help us identify the third and worst Antichrist. He warned. At once, one will see vengeance, 100 powers, thirst, famine. Some suggest that this is a vision Nostradamus had of our current time, and that it proves the Antichrist is in our midst. In using the word vengeance, is he pointing to our current wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, the Far East, in our own inner cities? Could the seer's reference to thirst and famine describe the starvation that exists today in drought and poverty-stricken villages? Nostradamus' genius may not have been as a seer or a prophet, but as a surrealist poet. His verses are broken, they're hard to understand, and they seem to speak to certain levels of the human mind that aren't always that easy to approach. 1555, Provence, France. Nostradamus sits in his secluded study. He appears to embark on a psychic journey in search of answers. He hears a voice at a certain point, and suddenly there's a shaking through his robes. And then a terror, followed by a divine splendor. And then he hears the god speak. Is Nostradamus really seeing the future? Evidence suggests Nostradamus identified the first Antichrist in one especially cryptic quatrain. Paul? Nay, Oleron will be more of fire than blood. Many believe this is Nostradamus's first Antichrist prophecy. He wrote it in 1555. Paul, Nay, Oleron are three towns in southwest France. The fact that the first three words are in bold font, uppercase. It's like nudge, nudge, nudge. I'm saying something here that you should look a second time at. For those who see prophecy in his work, Nostradamus is trying in this quatrain to reveal the identity of the first Antichrist by placing him in France. When you rearrange the letters of these three small towns, they spell out Napoleon Roy, Napoleon the King. The Wa spelled R-O-Y in the old French for R-O-I. Napoleon Bonaparte, one of history's most notorious tyrants. Is this quatrain proof that the Emperor of France was the first Antichrist prophesied? Did Nostradamus see Napoleon's arrival on the world stage 233 years before he came to power? An emperor will be born near Italy. He will cost his empire very dearly. Born in Corsica, about 30 miles from Italy, Napoleon proclaimed himself Emperor of France in 1799. He presented himself as a champion and savior of his people. Historians see Napoleon as a hero, a savior of France, during a time that France was economically suppressed, during a time when France needed a savior. He came as a false messiah, one who dominated the entire population and even crowned himself. People that follow him create evil. In other words, he influences people. According to Nostradamus, the ability to appear as a savior and seduce entire populations is characteristic of the Antichrist. But for interpreters of the prophecies, additional clues point to Napoleon as the first Antichrist. 
including Nostradamus's veiled warning to a Catholic pope of approaching danger. Roman pontiff, beware of approaching. Out of the city which the two rivers water, in that place you will come to spit your blood. In fact, Napoleon held Pope Pius VI prisoner in the town of Valence, where he later died vomiting blood in the month of August. Valence can be found at the confluence of two rivers. Followers of the famed seer say even Napoleon's contemporaries saw the likeness of the emperor in the writings of Nostradamus. Various prophecies in Nostradamus's verses were even applied to him in Napoleon's own time. One, for example, bearing a name which no French king passed on to him. That is to say, no one else was named Napoleon in the French monarchy, and he wasn't part of the old Bourbon ruling family. More fearsome than a thunderbolt, tremble will Italy, Spain, and England, all of whom Napoleon either invaded or fought with. So this kind of prophecy has been very easily applied to Napoleon. But it is believed that perhaps the level of havoc and bloodshed committed in Napoleon's name has most aptly branded him Antichrist. Nostradamus seems clear that the supposed first Antichrist, too, will be soaked in blood. That he is less a prince than a butcher. Certainly Napoleon was responsible for the deaths of many people. When he invaded Russia in 1812, his army starting out was 600,000 men. When he went back defeated, it was 18,000. He is the first Antichrist because one of the things they all share is a great shedding of blood. And that was the first big modern shedding of blood from Napoleon. Responsible one way or another for three and a half million deaths, likely more than any other single human being before him, many conclude that Napoleon does fit the description of the first Antichrist. The quatrains further state, but the French nation will fear the hour, north wind, the army having pushed too far. Even his wintry defeat after pushing too far into Russia, the north wind, seems to be echoed in Nostradamus's quatrains. Did Napoleon himself believe he was the first Antichrist Nostradamus prophesied? Evidence suggests the emperor was drawn to his writings. Napoleon traveled with a collection of Nostradamus' prophecies on his bedside table. Unfortunately, they were forgeries. At the turn of the 19th century, Napoleon ordered a genocide in France's colony in Haiti. His troops slaughtered as many as 100,000 slaves, gassing some of them with sulfur dioxide in the holds of French ships. A preview of genocide to come? Experts on Nostradamus' Antichrist prophecy believe Napoleon's actions created the conditions for a second and third Antichrist to follow, each who would ravage mankind, just as Nostradamus prophesied. If you did not have a Napoleon Bonaparte, you would not have had the steps which would have led to a unification of Germany later in the 19th century, which led to the second Antichrist, which created the modern world that created the atmosphere for the oncoming and third and final Antichrist. There is no doubt that Napoleon's trail of misery and destruction marks him as one of history's monsters. And if prophecy is to be believed, he is more. Perhaps the first Antichrist foretold by Nostradamus. Are there really multiple links between Nostradamus and Napoleon Bonaparte? And are they more than coincidence? How strong is the connection between Napoleon and our second alleged Antichrist, Adolf Hitler? Is it possible that these connections will lead us to identify the third Antichrist? If the Nostradamus effect is true, have the warnings in ancient texts and prophecies from Nostradamus himself converged to suggest that the end of days has actually begun? What, if any, would be the signs of Armageddon? I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from all around and bring them back into their own land. God said throughout the Old Testament that in the last days, 
I will draw my people from the four corners of the earth back to the land of their forefathers, Palestine. That literally opened the curtain for the Antichrist to come on the scene. We are examining whether an Antichrist of biblical proportions has arrived to accelerate the chaos and destruction witnessed in the modern world. The quatrains of Nostradamus suggest that this Antichrist will be the last of three false messiahs. His arrival will be immediately preceded by a second evil, one who creates the conditions for the last of Nostradamus's Antichrists to destroy the world. For centuries, followers of Nostradamus have examined his quatrains for clues to the identity of the second Antichrist. From the very depths of the west of Europe. Nostradamus feared that the second Antichrist would be many times more brutal than the first. Nostradamus is telling us that something is coming upon the earth that we are not used to, that he has described, if you like, in the first two Antichrists. They weren't simply national monsters, they were supranational monsters, they had enormous worldwide influence. And I think that that's what he's implying here. His prophecies about the second Antichrist are among his most persistent and specific. Many agree they point directly at history's most notorious madman. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. Nostradamus first mentions the second Antichrist in this chilling quatrain, which dooms Europe to another round of terror and destruction. And there is just such a man from the exact location prophesied by Nostradamus, Adolf Hitler. Liberty will not be regained. It will be occupied by a black, proud, villainous, and unjust man. When the matter of the pontiff is opened, the Republic of Venice will be vexed by Dister. Hitler often appears in interpretations of Nostradamus largely because Nostradamus keeps referring to a figure called Hister, which is fairly close to Hitler, and it means the Danube. Here, Nostradamus's prophecy seems precisely on target. Hitler was born in Austria, and Austria's main river is the Danube. It didn't take people long in Hitler's time to start applying them to him. Moreover, Magda Goebbels, who is the wife of Hitler's propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, who was interested in the occult, came across these things and said, wow, this must be about Hitler. She wasn't alone. Others made this same connection. The typesetter in one of the early versions of the prophecies actually turned one of the Hister Ister quatrains into Hitler by mistaking the letter and substituting the T. Hitler was known for his mesmerizing and charismatic speeches. In less than 10 years, he seduced Germany into waging war across the globe with virtually unquestioned impunity. Most disturbing, he convinced Germans to carry out a genocide that virtually wiped out European Jews and other victims. In all, more than six million people. Nostradamus writes, His fame will increase towards the realm of the East. The last line is quite interesting, which also points to it being about Hitler. Imperial Japan became so enamored with Adolf Hitler that it led to the Tripartite Act, the Axis Alliance, which united Mussolini's Rome with Hitler's Third Reich and Imperial Japan. Responsible for a death toll that reached into the tens of millions, Hitler is synonymous with evil more than any other single human being in history. But could he also be Nostradamus's second Antichrist? The way to understand why Hitler is the second Antichrist is again the steps that the first Antichrist initiates Napoleon by creating the modern world through the Napoleonic Wars that created the unification of Germany, the Second Reich, which led to the creation of the Third Reich of Adolf Hitler. That's the link between the first and the second. It is suggested that, like Napoleon before him, Hitler may have been aware of his own destiny as an Antichrist, as revealed in the quatrains of Nostradamus. 
Hitler was part of an esoteric and occult underworld before the First World War that was fascinated by Nostradamus and his prophecies. By 1939, Hitler was self-identifying with the idea of being the second Antichrist. Since this was such a large conflict, since this was another one of Nostradamus' very meaningful time periods, then this must be the second of his three Antichrists. They also believe Hitler perhaps saw Napoleon as his Antichrist predecessor. He revered Napoleon, and soon after the fall of France in 1940, visited the French dictator's tomb. And even more verses seem to link Hitler to Nostradamus's second Antichrist. He seems to hint at Hitler's downfall. Beast ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. If you were in the 16th century and you had to describe an automobile or a tank or a floating attack boat, you might call it a beast that roared with its thundering engines, that breathed like a dragon, that come across the great rivers. Beast ferocious with hunger. He's trying to look at fantastic technology that he's never seen before. Into a cage of iron will the Great One be drawn, when the child of Germany observes nothing. And the cage of iron, is this Hitler's bunker? the bunker that Hitler retreated to toward the end of this reign. If an emissary of future visions gave you a great trench dug in Berlin that had all this amazing iron rebar work for a huge bunker that was under construction, wouldn't it be said that you put that man underground into this great cage, which became the Fuhrer bunker? It was in this bunker that Hitler, on the verge of losing the war he himself initiated, committed suicide. Some see Hitler's sociopathic lack of conscience as further proof that he is Nostradamus's second Antichrist. If Christ embodies pure compassion, Hitler is his exact opposite. I am haunted by a quote that Hitler gave very honestly about his ability to find the right way and make the right decision. I follow my path with the complete confidence and certainty of a sleepwalker. To be asleep is the ultimate unconsciousness, to literally be a somnambulist through life. Here is this very powerful, charismatic sleepwalker leading the whole world into an abyss. That, to me, is Antichrist. According to believers, the Nostradamus effect may be overwhelming our modern world. But how can these theories be tested? If Napoleon was the first Antichrist and Hitler the second, who was the third? And is he among us? Evidence suggests that before this false prophet can unleash a terrible battle between the forces of good and evil, another critical step must first take place. The prophecies of Nostradamus suggest that a third false messiah, a new antichrist, may arrive in our lifetime. Some believe his predictions are foreshadowed by the book of Revelation. This biblical text purports that a so-called savior will set the conditions for Armageddon. From where do believers suspect this third Antichrist will emerge? Will it be in the turbulent Middle East, Iraq, Iran? Or might he appear from desperate regions within Africa? Some say he will perhaps emerge from within a superpower government, such as the United States. I believe that the world is already preparing for him coming on the scene. What clues in the quatrains of Nostradamus provide solid leads to identify the third Antichrist? The one he wanted to warn our time about was the third one, because he was the worst of all of them, because he would learn from the mistakes made by Hitler. This way he would know which way to go. And he's a very dangerous man, very powerful and very dangerous. 
But there's a strange and unexpected twist. Some believe this most horrible of Nostradamus' antichrists will be heralded by evil forerunners, extremely dangerous men who will signal his arrival. Nostradamus seems to suggest as much in this obscure quatrain. The chief of London through the realm of America, the Isle of Scotland will be tried by frost. King and Reb will face an antichrist so false that he will place them in the conflict altogether. Are the followers of Nostradamus suggesting that some of today's most savage leaders who have targeted the United States and Western Europe with their terrorist attacks may be trusty lieutenants of this third antichrist? Are they actually clearing the way for the third antichrist's arrival? He saw at least seven rulers that would come to power before the time of the antichrist. Some believe Saddam Hussein was one of these forerunners. They say it was written in the stars and interpreted by Nostradamus himself, who predicted, At once one will see vengeance, 100 powers, thirst, famine, when the comet will pass. Saddam Hussein died and was hung. And on that very night before his death, a little smudge in the sky called Comet McNaught became visible. Comet McNaught in the next two weeks became the brightest comet in 60 years. Although Nostradamus experts suggest Saddam himself was the third Antichrist, others disagree. They argue that unlike Napoleon and Hitler, as the supposed first two Antichrists, Hussein lacked their vast power. Before you can qualify really to be the third Antichrist, you've got to have a big army, you got to have a big air force, you got to have a big navy, you got to have a lot of manpower, you got to have a lot of economic resources. Saddam had a little of that, but not a whole lot of it. So he didn't really qualify to be the big bad wolf of the future. He saw Saddam Hussein as not the Antichrist, but a forerunner. Many of these would set the stage. Others suggest yet another quatrain as possible proof that the theory of forerunners to the third Antichrist is valid. It seems to implicate Osama bin Laden, mastermind of the attacks on 9-11. In the year 1999 and seven months, a great king of terror will come from the sky. We have the famous prophecy about the king of terror descending from the skies in 1999, which could be a reverse code for 1999 becomes 9111, September month. Great king of terror coming from the sky, hijacked planes. Other followers of end of day prophecy have echoed the belief that bin Laden is the third antichrist. But is he really? At first I thought Osama bin Laden he might qualify to be the third Antichrist, but it's a little bit too early to tell. Well, as time has gone on, I think we were jumping the gun to think that either Saddam or bin Laden was Nostradamus' third Antichrist. Further examination of yet another quatrain focuses the emphasis back on the third Antichrist described by Nostradamus. Long awaited, he will never return in Europe he will appear in Asia. So Antichrist can pop up in any country, and we don't know if he's going to be from the Middle East. He might be from China. We don't know. He says that he will rise above all the kings in the Orient. The Ayatollah Khomeini, Muammar Gaddafi, Kim Jong-il, with so many possible forerunners having come from the Middle and Far East, some interpreters believe it is no coincidence that the search for the Antichrist is now focused in such unstable regions. In the Middle East, some faithful see the return of the Jewish people to Israel as further fulfillment of biblical prophecy, and further evidence the end times and the Antichrist are here today. Primarily in 1917, Britain took control of Palestine. In the Balfour Declaration, they invited Jews from all over the world back to Israel. That began, in some Bible scholars' opinion, the last days as we know it today. For other scholars, this hunt for the Antichrist conveniently pits one religion 
against another. It's so interesting that we as humans love to have an enemy. And throughout the ages, we have always wanted to focus either on a whole people group, on a society that we can have as our enemy. But what does Nostradamus say? If the evil forerunners to the third Antichrist have come and gone, what happens now? The enduring mystery of his quatrains has allowed multiple interpretations over the centuries on the details of the third Antichrist's appearance. Who do his followers actually believe may be this third and final false savior? As I read through some of these time period predictions of Nostradamus, some of these shifts, is that he's presenting us with alternative future paths. If we make a choice in this decade, then it's going to result in these events further down the line. If we respond to those events negatively, then this is going to happen. If we respond positively, then maybe we can change things. Today, believers see signs everywhere of global destruction. To them, this may confirm that the third Antichrist is among us. If we accept these theories as fact, who is he finally? And how far along is he in his timeline of destruction? Is the clock ticking? Is doomsday fast approaching? There are those who believe the Nostradamus effect is occurring as ancient prophecies and today's cataclysmic events converge. Some say this course is irrevocable. If it were up to human will, if it were a human will choice, we could change this and not have to go through it. We don't have that choice. Biblical prophecy warns of an antichrist who will destroy mankind. Nostradamus says we will suffer three. If we accept the theory that Napoleon and Hitler were the first two, what might the third and most cunning antichrist hold in store for us? Could the Antichrist be a real person and not a construct of religion and symbolism? We are racing irreversibly toward the end of time and through the ultimate prophecies that condemn the earth. It is prophecy and prophecy will be fulfilled to the letter. Nostradamus's prophecies suggest the third Antichrist may have powers that far exceed the other two. Stained with mass murder and adultery, this great enemy of humanity will be worse than any man before him, in steel, fire, water, bloody and monstrous. So the question becomes, are any real leaders today actual candidates who meet the criteria identified in these prophecies? Critics point out that just about every world leader has been accused of fitting the profile of Antichrist at one time or another according to who is or is not popular at any given time. This individual changes with the generations, practically with the decades. In the 1970s, it was common, or at least done, to identify possibly someone like Henry Kissinger. And the list of unlikely candidates goes on. Still, some cite a mysterious name, Mabus. It appears in another one of Nostradamus's quatrains. Mabus will soon die, then will come. A horrible undoing of people and animals. Some believe Mabus is the name Nostradamus has assigned to the third Antichrist. Could Mabus be a coded reference? Two presidents have been linked to the name Mabus by extreme adherents of prophecy. The first is the 43rd president of the United States, George W. Bush. Even non-believers of this theory can explain the connection. You follow the rule of everything in lowercase letters. The GW becomes AM because you can turn them upside down. Swivel them and you have Ma Bush. Drop the redundant letter, you have Ma Bush. Although this seems to implicate George W. Bush as a candidate for the third Antichrist, Scholars dismiss that suggestion, especially since his transition out of power is credited as being orderly. But what about President Number 44? More recently, there was a mayor in Georgia who got into trouble for circulating an email asking if Barack Obama was the Antichrist. 
So the Antichrist is a very fluid concept that can adapt to your needs. In fact, Nostradamus himself seems to definitively say that no recent U.S. president fits the bill. The third Antichrist very soon annihilated. 27 years his bloody war will last. This prophecy suggests a long-lasting worldwide war will follow the third Antichrist's death. Could the third Antichrist have already come and gone? The Bible points to a series of cataclysms that may coincide with the aftermath of the third Antichrist. The book of Revelation states, There was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood, and the stars fell from the sky to the earth. Many say the natural and unnatural disasters that now plague the earth indicate we are at a tipping point. But are we really closer to the end than ever before? The prophets are trying to tell us about climate change, about famine, about a figure in the Middle East that we need to recognize before he starts a 27-year war. These are the things that the prophets like Nostradamus are trying to make us see and change. If we accept the theories by adherents of prophecy that we may be on the path to Armageddon, might we have time to influence those events? Are the multiple quatrains of Nostradamus hard evidence that the third Antichrist is among us? The final line he talks about, one of the ugliest visions that I've ever seen. The heretics dead, captives exiled, blood-soaked human bodies. Is he talking about hemorrhagic fever when he talks about blood-soaked human bodies, which is also something that certain biological agents do. And a reddened, icy hail covering the earth. Does he mean a reddened, icy hail from some kind of nuclear discharge that creates a modest nuclear winter? Little rain, warm wind, wars, incursions. The pestilences, those kinds of things are just getting closer together and then they're escalating. A horrible undoing of people and animals. I think Nostradamus in his prophecies often shows a fascination and a horror. He uses the word horrible a lot in looking at the more negative possibilities of the future. It is fact that multiple crises worldwide have deepened. Nuclear weapons among rogue nations have increased tenfold. Economies around the world remain on the brink of collapse. The U.S. government prepares for another terrorist attack on American soil. More coincidence? For believers, these are not random events, but dire signs of the coming apocalypse. We're seeing the mass deterioration of our Earth and its environment. As that sea level starts to raise up, and countries start to be flooded, that's when the mass panic is gonna hit. It's going to come upon us so quick that people will be panicked. We're talking about complete universal destruction where nobody can help anybody. But others suggest the prophecies of Nostradamus have a decidedly different meaning and purpose. I think people need comfort. They want to know what's going to happen, especially at times of great unease, such as we're experiencing at the moment. And Nostradamus appears to offer some sort of certainty, in the sense that so many of his quatrains have been seen to be correct in retrospect. As the theory goes, the end fast approaches, the sands slip away, and the hands spin out of control. The third Antichrist wreaks havoc. Is this our future? Perhaps Nostradamus is warning us that people must pay attention and act. We've been here before. We're going through it now, we'll go through it in the future. But humanity will go on. But many interpreters say we won't, that it's only a question of when the third Antichrist will make his demonic entrance. If we accept the premise that the Bible and Nostradamus are warning us, what messages remain for us to decode? Or are we ultimately destined to experience the Nostradamus effect?